Lance Hall here for Let's Discuss with Lance Hall. Happy to welcome my friend Marta Gabriel back to the program. Marta, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing fine. Thank you very much. I, In general, I spent an awesome day today. The weather was so nice. I visited my horses in the barn. So yeah, the day was pretty, pretty good today to me. That is a good day. It was a nice day over here too. We, we've been real hot and humid. Today was warm, but it wasn't humid. So that was good. Here so. in Poland, it's warm uh, as well. Finally, mm -hmm. because, you know, I hate winters. I don't like autumn. Spring, well, it might be if it's not raining, but summer. Summer is something totally for me, you know. I could live in Spain, in Portugal or Greece or some, you know, um, in those countries where it's permanently warm and hot. This is yeah. weather for me. I know yeah. some people don't like when it's hot. I love it. All right. <laughs> Well, speaking of hot, let's talk about this new album that Crystal Viper has out, The Silver Key, which is definitely, you know, I thought it was going to melt my computer by the time I got done listening to it. Uh, fantastic album. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's uh, the, the even the cover art is uh, the, the, the paint all on the cover art isn't dry yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we have release date on Friday. So, yeah, we are all very excited. And actually, we will be celebrating a release date of this album uh, during our um, travel to France, because on Saturday we play on Hellfest. Oh, wow. So, All right. Yeah, so. and, and we will have a lot of time at the airport because we need to get there by two planes. So right. you know, a time bef before uh, between first one and second one on the airport, it will be like four or five hours. So there right. will be some time. To <laughs> yeah, it'll give you plenty of time. Yeah. Yeah. New album Silver Key coming out this Friday, June 28th on Listenable Records. Let's get that in as well. Uh, follows up 2021's The Cult. Uh, both albums inspired by H.P. Lovecraft. You, you like uh, you like Lovecraft stuff. Well, I like it that much that I'm really seriously thinking about making part three. Wow. <laughs> Next Crystal Viper album also inspired by Lovecraft um, stories and novels. Yes, I'm a huge fan of Lovecraft. I really like reading his stories and novels, but I won't lie to you. I wasn't uh, familiar with his writing for uh, for many years, actually. Mm. Um, I first um, read, I read his first stories. It was not very long time before the cult, actually. Okay. Um, in general, I like reading books. I read a lot and I read in in every three moments that I have mm. and as well as my husband. So he actually know what kind of books I like. And one day he simply told me that I should try to read something from Howard Phillips Lovecraft. And I was like, ah, nah. I because you know I knew this Cthulhu monster from the sea and I wasn't really interested in that and he told me it's not only about the about that monster from the sea about the Cthulhu yeah. just take a peek at and he recommended me the for the story the dreams in the witch house and this was the very first story from Lovecraft that I read and it completely blown my mind and I was so surprised that I can read some um that there is some so many cool stuff still mm -hmm. in science fiction horror science fiction that i i i i just was i was speechless uh so after the dreams in the witch house there was another story and another story and another story and yeah. then i was already working on the cult and I loved Lovecraft stories and novels that much that I decided to write lyrics inspired by his works. And when The Cult was released, I was keep on composing music. I was keep on writing lyrics and I was keep on reading his stories because he wrote lots of stories. And I even recently discovered that he was writing poems some couple of months ago. I got another book uh, with poems from Howard Phillips Lovecraft. So... Yeah, I was I was work, working on the silver key, keep on reading Lovecraft, and that was so obvious to me. You know, that was 
I mean, finishing work, working on the cult and jumping into the writing material for the silver key and mm -hmm. staying under this inspiration umbrella from, from Lovecraft. It was like never, I felt like I've never left Providence for real, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, here we are with the new album of the silver key, again, inspired by Howard Phillips Lovecraft. And, um, mm -hmm. And I think if I will start working on the new Crystal Viper album soon, it's maybe, I think it will be inspired by Lovecraft again. Cool. Excellent. The first thing I noticed on this album was and, and you're playing bass. And I look back, is this the first album? I know you played bass on like tracks and stuff before, but is this the first album where we went fully in on bass as opposed to being on guitar? Uh, actually not. Uh, yeah. And to be honest, I recorded more albums with bass guitars than with guitar, actually. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I recorded the Silver Key on bass guitar. I recorded the Cult. I recorded my solo album. Uh, I recorded bass guitar for Moon Chamber album. Um, and from those album that albums that I recently recorded, oh, I recorded bass guitar for one uh, of uh, Blazon Stone albums, and in the past, actually, I recorded many Crystal Viper uh, okay. things. I did not guitar. know that. Now, how about yeah, live yeah. though? Have you always played bass live, or did, I've seen you playing guitar on stage as well? Yes, yes, because I I was mostly playing uh, guitar. It's changed uh when uh we decided for a moment that maybe i shouldn't play any instrument on stage i mean it was an idea of our re previous rec record company it was not an, our idea yeah. uh but we decided to change that to give it a try and then we needed second guitarist because because if i quit playing guitar we had to look for someone else Right. Uh, and we uh, and then Eric joined the band on second guitar, and we still have Blaze on bass guitar, and we were playing like that for a moment. And the truth is that I hated to perform without instruments in my hands. Hmm. It was it was simply horrible to me. I I felt like I'm lying to myself. I'm lying to fans. I'm lying to everyone because you know at the end of the live show when I was going off stage, I didn't feel like I did a great job. You know, it was like, yeah. eh, it was okay. But I, I didn't feel that energy on stage. I wasn't that excited. No adrenaline in veins, you know. So I told the guys from my band that I want to, I want to be back on guitar. So there was a period of time with Christoph Viper that we were playing on three guitars and the bass guitar because there was Eric, Andy and me on third yeah. guitar and Blaze on bass. Uh, but um not that long ago our uh, bass guitarist um our basic uh, blaze mm -hmm. uh, due to his life situation he had to quit the band and he told us that he's planning to quit the band that you know give us time to look for someone else and sure. um, the truth is we really didn't want him to leave because over oh, for during all that time he was in the band we, be we became a very very good friends and I really liked to work with him, you know, in Crystal Viper on stage and so on. Mm. But after he left the band, we decided to not look for someone else. But I decided, I mean, I'm, I decided, it wasn't only my decision. We decided to give it a try with me on bass guitar because the truth is I am playing bass guitar as long as I play guitar because I was learning playing those instruments yeah. all together when I was composing Crystal Viper songs in the past and I was recording demo songs I was learning playing both instruments to be able to record arrangements for for the demos of the songs yeah. so I gave it a try with a bass guitar on stage and on the beginning it was pretty pretty hard for me because you know most of people would say that Ah, right now it should be easier for you because you know you play bass less strings less effort and so on but it's not true it's not true when you sing and play for example when you play guitar you can pull one chord and when you pull that chord you can sing entire verse for example with bass guitar it's not possible because you are a rhythm section you need to keep on going with drums all the time you keep on going keep on going you play the rhythm and you have to sing. So 
Um, on the beginning, it was very difficult for me to connect those two activities, singing and playing bass. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could do both, you know, separately, and I was pretty happy about that. But doing that at the same time, playing bass and vocals, it wasn't that easy. But I, you know, but I, but all I had to do was to practice, practice, practice. Right. And right now, I feel so comfortable with bass guitar on stage. And um, to be honest, I really like that. You know, mm. I feel even more powerful with bass on stage than I felt with guitar. You know, it's bass guitar, low, yeah. low, powerful notes. And um, and I would like to stick to bass guitar for a longer time. Well, <laughs> that's cool. yeah. You basically answered my question because I was going to, you know, the question I was going to ask is there a, a difference in performing live playing bass as opposed to guitar and you you answer perfectly because like you said with the bass you've got to be locked in with the drummer and you know there's yeah. a lot more rhythm there whereas like guitar you can yeah yeah you answered it perfectly you answered the question i was going to ask i um, know i talk i, I talk a lot <laughs> no it was perfect you, you saved me from asking the question um <laughs> Let's jump into the album a little bit. Um, I got notes on a couple of the songs. Track one, Return to Providence, is an instrumental. This song, believe it or not, once it got rolling, sort of made me think of oh, an, a track that Sticks would have made back in their early days, you know, around the Sticks 2 albums and, and, and albums like that. They had a lot of instrumentals like that. And it really made me think of that, um, which I thought was really cool because I love the old Sticks stuff. Um, I thought it was a great opening. Well, um, there there are no influ influences like that. Yeah, it's just like I'm a huge fan of this, you know, '80s uh, movie soundtracks. Yeah, and, um, this this intro, I wanted it to sound like that. <laughs> yeah, and, and the truth is, if you listen to main melody uh, on the intro on the Return to Providence, you will find there a melody from the cult. Okay. Because this intro is connected with one of our songs uh, from the previous album. So yeah, I have to go back and listen to it. Uh... Track three, Old House in the Mist. Uh, does this sort of go along? I, I read on your spare time, you and Barrett like to uh, travel and explore like ruins and stuff like that. Was this song inspired from, from you know, a ruins or something that you saw on a, on a weekend trip, this Old House in the Mist song? No, it's a yeah. song literally inspired by story from Lovecraft about Old House in the Mist. Okay. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> as simple as that <laughs> sounds good then easy enough um track four the key is lost i liked this uh first off there's an epic solo in here i love the guitar solo in this song it was fabulous your vocal there's almost like in, in parts of this and like the verses and stuff there's like a yearning almost a vulnerability that i could hear in this track that i thought was really good because usually you're very powerful I could hear, like like I said, a yearning of a vulnerability in your vocal. Is that anything you were going for, or am I the only one hearing that? Um, you know, I always, when I record vocals in the um, recording studio for, you know, for, for albums, for singles, in general, when I record vocals, I try to do that with, a, you know, with a soul, with a real feelings that I have inside um during singing the specific song so it in my opinion it it wouldn't make any sense any sense to just go to studio and to sing the melody without any um, without any feelings with your voice right. for yeah. me it was always like singing and a song is also like telling a story not only with words but also with the tone of your voice. It's mm. like telling, a, 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 try to imagine telling a, a, telling a fairy tale, a story to a child. Right. This child may not understand everything perfectly, but it can feel uh, the, the thrill or the happiness by mm. your tone. And this is something that I also want to do with my voice, to tell to tell the story also with 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 the with the charisma from voice yeah. you know yeah that's mm. something like that 
we touched on this briefly in our last interview. You know, you you got intro to music very at a very early age, at like six. You know, when you saw this orchestra, did you? And you've, you're obviously you know a, a great guitar player. You're doing bass. You're singing. Did you ever do any vocal lessons or anything along the way, or have you just sort of created your own voice? Actually, uh, I can say um, that I've never been at any vocal lessons. Only many years ago, I decided to uh, visit one vocal coach just to check if I'm breathing, breathing correctly during singing. Mm -hmm. And that was it. But in general, what I what I'm doing with my voice is like I've learned that I've learned all of that myself and I've learned that mostly by watching my idols singing you know yeah. Eric Adams from Menowar Tony Martin Doro Pesh Jutta Weinhold Leather Leon uh, Dio and I was you know singing along their songs and I was trying to maybe not if maybe not emulate them but I was trying if I am able to do something similar with my mm. voice that that I like in their voices. Yeah. So this is how the vocalists like that was created, you know. So yeah. and I think it is actually a very nice way to of, of learning something. Sure. By watching your idols. Yeah, I, I uh, stumbled across a video when I, as I was prepping for this interview I hadn't seen before from, uh, I think it was from 2017, you guys were covering Grim Reaper's See You in Hell live, and you nailed it. I mean, that's a tough song to sing, and you were killing it on that vocal. Thank you very much, but this is an amazing song. Yeah. This is like... And I really like Grim Reaper. If I only could, I would record cover songs from all, all, all of their, their songs, seriously. Yeah. And I also felt like my voice kind of match their songs, you know? And mm -hmm. sometimes, because with cover songs, it's, it's always like that. Always like that. There is a song that you want to record, but then you are recording it or playing it with your, with your band. And there are two situations. You are super happy with that and feels like, and you feel like it's <laughs> almost your song or a song composed for you. Yeah. Or the other situation is like, nah, that was a mistake. <laughs> with, yeah, with Grim Reaper was the first one. It was yeah. like, I felt so comfortable while singing it. So yeah, it was a good idea. That's to, cool. To record it. There was a, a couple of lines from The Key is Lost that I really liked. Um, it was, I want to sail under the moon where the time falls from the glowy dunes. I love that that image right there. Um, I don't want to leave it all behind me. I love that, those three lines. Those are fabulous. Um, those obviously Lovecraft inspired. Yes, uh, glad to, I'm glad you like it. Thank you very much. Yeah. And um, if you really, really like uh, the lyrics of this song, um, maybe try to read uh, Lovecraft stories uh, which are connected with the Silver Key in general because yeah. there are a few. I've tried to read him in the past. I find I have to do it in very small bites because there's so much to absorb. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so much to absorb. Well, let's talk about track seven then, the Silver Key. Um, love the video for this. You're on Full Metal Cruise. Look like you're having a pretty good time. What give us a little bit of a, a background on the Silver Key, how that became the title track, and what inspired it? Uh, well, firstly, we were thinking about um, giving this album the title The Cult Part Two mm -hmm. uh, because musically, to me, it's still Crystal Viper, music uh, lyrics are still inspired by Lovecraft, so and everything. You know, from one album to, to this one, every everything went so smoothly and so natural that to me, the idea of naming, of giving a name, the cult part two to this album was very cool. But we started to think about this and um, we thought that for people who never heard Crystal Viper before, uh, starting listening to our music, from album The Cult Part 
two, if they never heard part one, might right. be kind of com confusing. So uh, we decided uh, to change the title for the Silver Key, especially uh, because it's a cool song, and we all we all really like this one. And um, on this album, there there are more uh, lyrics connected, you know, with the Silver mm -hmm. Key itself. Very cool. Um, the other track that really jumped out at me was Wayfaring Dreamer. Uh, just a fabulous ballad. Um, and again, there were lines in here that I love. Wayfaring Dreamer, I'm on my own. So many mysteries, no one to guide me. I have to face all challenges alone. Um, I like that. You know, there's a poignancy to that, I guess, is the word that comes to mind. You know, what can you tell me a little bit about Wayfaring Dreamer? Um, actually, I will tell you something pretty uh, interesting. Okay. Um, well, the Wayfaring Dreamer, uh, the song, as it is right now, this is how all of the Crystal Viper songs start. On the beginning, all of them sounds like this. Mm -hmm. Because I compose, I still compose Crystal Viper songs mostly on my piano. Okay. And and then I arrange them uh, for, um, you know, with guitar, with bass, with drums and so on. I mean, when I'm creating songs, I most, I, um, in general, when I'm creating songs, I hear entire arrangement in my head. So from, so from very beginning, I know, um, I mean, I almost hear the final result. result uh, really? Like, that's, that's amazing. Yes. Yeah, I call it musical schizophrenia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, I uh, but when I have this idea for a song and I hear it playing in my head, I quickly sit with my piano, uh, turn on recording button, and um, and I record the song with my piano, so it stays in my head and I'm not losing it somewhere because it happened many times in my life that I created a song in my head, I heard everything perfectly, and then it was gone because. I didn't record it on time. So, yeah. And Wayfaring Dreamer, uh, to be honest, I really like this songs with this kind of atmosphere and uh, in this form, piano and my voice only. And maybe it would be a good, a good idea for the future to record an entire album like that. I don't know. Yeah, do like a symphonic something like that yeah that'd be fabulous maybe not even symphonic just piano in my voice piano? yeah i mean if people if people if people will not like it i will like it for sure. yeah. so uh, maybe i will record an album just for yeah, yeah we'll see <laughs> i would i would like it i think it'd be great yeah so you are the, the the so you will be the 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 one the only one person who will buy it so when you put it out we will do an interview and we'll talk about it all right <laughs> <laughs> um i gotta tell you though my favorite track on the album as i'm listening through i got the download with the cd bonus track of god of thunder uh, wind and rain uh, that classic metal sound on that that was my favorite track um is, is this a, a, a new one is this something you had left over how did it become the bonus track uh, Gods of Thunder, of Wind, and, and of Rain is a cover song, actually. I did uh, not know that. It's a song from Bathory. I did not know that. Yeah, it's a song from Bathory. Bathory is one of my favorite bands as well. Uh, do you know Bathory in general? Or... I know the, yeah, I know the band, uh, but obviously not well enough to know that this was one of their songs. <laughs> I'm almost uh, a little embarrassed. And... I usually do a little more research than this. Um, uh, you know, it's not possible to know everything. It's yeah. not possible to know everything and uh, to remember everything. I know it by just looking at myself that sometimes I don't even remember the titles of my yeah. own albums. So, yeah, <laughs> it's not possible. But regarding Batori and this cover song, right now you will... I you, you, you can make sure that I'm a fan of Batori because the name of the person who was actually Batori his name was Quarton. Okay. And I even named my horse Quarton. <laughs> oh, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> very cool. Um, 
So you talked about how Saturday you're going to Hellfest. Um, you've got yeah. some dates lined up. And then did I see you're going to do a, a European tour later? Is it later on this year with Savage Master? Yes, exactly. Exactly. Stacy Savage, she and I go way back as well. I, I think I've interviewed them for every every album that uh, they've put out. Do you guys share a moment on stage? When You played together in the past, didn't you? Uh, I think so. But in general, I know Adam and Stacy for a long time right now. Uh, and um, and I'm sure this tour will be <laughs> super, super fun to yeah. go with them. Yeah. Do you see you two maybe doing a duet of a song on stage together? Why not? We will see. Yeah, I think that would be amazing. Amazing. They're a fabulous band. Um, who Bart has worked with, correct? Your husband? He, he was even on tour with them, I don't know, last year or two years ago. Yeah. They they were, I, I remember they were playing European tour and he was on tour with them. Very cool. As a as tour manager. And with his rec record company a couple of years ago, he was releasing uh, Savage Master albums. Excellent. So this is actually how we get to know each other. Yeah. It makes it a very small world, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, Marta, I thank you for your time tonight. But before we go, you know I've got to ask you some of my silly questions, okay? Maybe questions you haven't been asked before. Does that sound good? Wow, I'm afraid right now. <laughs> I've only I've only got a couple, so but because I, I wanted to come out with something fresh. Um, right. You talked about how you, your love of reading. What was the last book that you read? The title of the last book you read? Uh, actually, uh, I recently read a lot about training courses. Okay, all right. Favorite old school arcade game? I read where you're into ar arcade games. Tetris. What's that again now? Tetris. Okay. Okay. All right. Tetris. Okay. Gotcha. 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 Um, go to horror movie on a dark and stormy night. Mm, Nightmare on Elm Street. Nightmare on Elm Street. Have you watched the complete series? Of course. Okay. <laughs> or or Hell, Hell, Hellraiser. Hellraiser, yeah, yeah, those are good. I have to ask you that I watched a couple last year for Halloween. Uh, the Terror Fire and Terror Fire 2. Have you seen those with the clown? No, I haven't. You will never root for a clown to get killed so much in your life as in these movies. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, yes, you will. Uh, <laughs> so thank you for warning. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, let's see. What was the one other one? All right. If you could blink and appear anywhere in the world right now, where would you be? In Texas. In Texas? Yes. Riding horses. Yes, and buying cowboy boots. <laughs> <laughs> All right, excellent. Uh, most prized possession? Um, there doesn't exist anything like that because I don't pay um, a lot of att attention to value of things. Okay. Okay. I thought you might say uh, Glenn Tipton's, uh, the autograph box that you got from Glenn Tipton. Oh, you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when when uh, we are talking about Glenn Tipton, I have something new. Okay. A, couple of, a couple of months ago, my husband gave me a collector's card with Glenn Tipton, and I have it um, in uh, my mobile case. So Glenn Tipton is right now always with me. Oh, excellent. Oh. Excellent. Um, <laughs> let's see. Last one. When you go out on tour, do you usually travel heavy with a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of suitcases? Or do you travel light, carry on bag and whatever else you need and you're off? Oh, always heavy. Yeah. Just, you know, only my hair dryer and my boots. It's one suitcase. <laughs> so and i still need to pack my gear i need to pack my cosmetics my clothes and i pack a lot of clothes because you never know how's the weather gonna be in the, yeah. the place where you are going so we need to take something hot something not hot something uh, you know against rain so lots of suit cases and um and I'm that lucky that the guys from my band are always helping me to carry my stuff. So, yeah. 
Very cool. Once again, we have been talking to Marta Gabriel of Crystal Viper. Their new album, The Silver Key, comes out this Friday, June 28th on Listenable Records. Uh, check it out. It's an amazing album. I loved every minute of it, Marta. Um, I will take a moment to wish you safe travels. May all your travels be safe and all your gigs sold out. Thank you very much. Thank you for a nice words and uh, thank you for having me. And um, yeah, so... Um... And maybe we'll see you in the States here sometime. And see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Finally. Bye.